Tiny board is now in session. I'll give a couple quick updates. First, one thing Michelle was telling me last week when we leave our uh, cell phones mm -hmm. on the table, and that's why I'm going to see if you keep it on vibrate, it's picking it up on the mic, right? So you should either turn your volume completely off, don't put it on vibrate, you know that, or check your phone, all right? Because uh, we're being picked up on YouTube and the other places. From now on, you got to do that either just shutting down, whatever, because it's actually picking it up on the table itself, vibrating. So, yes, it's not going to be so. A couple of updates. Mark and Doc will not be with us tonight. Uh, Ashley will be coming for two of the projects tonight. Our attorney from uh, the GE properties and 145 Kings Highway. Our good attorney, Dave, will be with us on the other two projects tonight. Our next meeting is June 7th. Um, on that one, a tentative schedule right now. And again, it's just tentative. Uh, Broccoli Patch is probably going to be coming in. Uh, Tim Barn may come back in. So that'll be determined tonight. Schuster Noodle wanted to come back in. Uh, that for a, uh, uh, they told us that the last meeting. Uh, McBride may come back. Uh, Trade Strands is talking about coming back. They wanted to come in tonight. They came in two days ago. I hope to get it. Not come in for two days' notice. So that's kind of what our. Uh, Meeting on the next one, and that's subject to change constantly, right? It's already put a draft agenda. I think, so, uh, we're having a public hearing tonight for 26 McBride tonight. Uh, at the appropriate time, I'm going to open up the uh, hearing for a public uh, pres presentation. First, we'll hear from the applicant, and n none of the other projects are open to the public tonight. Uh, uh, you can listen to what we have to say and everything like that. But they're not public hearings for tonight. So, there's it. Show you that. So the first thing on agenda tonight is um, 26 McBride Road. Uh, it's a proposed resubdivision or hotline change on two existing tax lots tax to make uh, a new buildable lot over there. Now. So, Steve, I think it is, right? Yes. Please so give me one second. I'll bring up the plan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just go over uh, anything new, but also we got the public's here. To have anyone maybe here from the public? So just go over. So we'll start with your plans. Yes, please. Uh, you can start with the second sheet. This one. Yes, that's good. Right. Okay, so this is a application for a lot line change, uh, which isn't a, a, an approved use or essentially a um, it's a subdivision by the town of Chester code because there is no lot line change in the town code. Um, it's an existing substandard lot um, in the vicinity of where the proposed septic is shown on the screen. It was a substandard lot of approximately 0 0.4 acres. Uh, we're proposing a lot line change in order to take um, property from the adjoining parcel, which is owned by the same entity, to make that a two-acre buildable lot while maintaining three acres on the remaining lot, which is within the zoning requirements. Uh, the application had been before the uh, town board in order to get a local law changed in order to um, change the zoning for that substandard lot. It was in the AR.3, which was requiring a larger lot, minimum lot size. They've subsequently changed the zoning to make it the AI zone for which the minimum acreage is two. Uh, the lot number one as shown on the plans is as an existing dwelling. There's no changes to be made to that lot. It's gonna remain the same with the only proposed improvements to be made to lot number two of which would be the driveway, the septic, the well, and the house itself. Um, the, Tree clearing will be kept to a minimal, uh, as well as the earth disturbance. They're going to try to maintain. There's an existing farm access road at the vicinity of where the proposed driveway enters or um, accesses off of McBride Road. So the applicant's going to uh, utilize that same location to the greatest extent possible. We're going to obviously uh, regrade that in order to make the, I believe the grades are fairly steep in some portions. So we're going to regrade it in order to kind of lessen the severity of the slopes. Additionally, uh, the board asked to show a lighting. 
it's not on this sheet, but it's on the, the next subsequent sheet. But there is a lighting shown on the proposed driveway, which is basically a, a standard contractor's um, two small fixture that comes from like a Home Depot. It's just, you know, you can get it with a motion sensor. It's um, a very low uh, wattage LED light system, but it will not protrude out even beyond the proposed driveway. It's a very, very low level uh, light that we're proposing. Aside from that, um, we've also gotten the SHPO determination there as, as a no impact. I believe the planning board did receive a copy of that as well. And that was the only other outstanding item that the, um, the engineer had uh, addressed at the last meeting. Okay. Uh, anything? I did have a couple things, yes. The, um, so the existing well for lot number one, that's inside the two-story frame well? Yes. Is that the separation distance to the new uh, SDS, looks like it's about 120 feet down grade. Yes. So the septic field is higher than that well? It is, okay. but we also located it so that it's uh, beyond 45 degrees from the effluent discharge downhill from the septic tank. Or from the septic leach field. So it would maintain that same separations that the health department would require um, as part of that. And then the existing septic field for? That we don't know. Uh, it's it's a house that's been in existence for a number of years and we've approached the property owner and they, they're they not even 100% sure it's the location. I suspect it's a seepage pit somewhere um, that's gravity fed. They do not have a pump chamber or any kind of uh, other dosing system. So it would be closer or located between the dwelling and McBride Road. Okay. So I guess if we could just show the separation between that well and the existing septic system. Okay. And then the percolation test, it looks like you had a percolation of almost a minute. Yes. Very fast. So when we, when we go out there and do our joint soils inspection. Which we've done. We have done. Okay. Yes. Do we have different results for that? No, we did. The only soils testing we did was in, in witness by your office. Okay. And it was the one minute? One minute. It was a one, one was one 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 was one minute and the second one i believe was 20 something yeah, minutes Is that yeah so we did find a, a much slower perk so the system is adequately designed for that slower percolation rate and then our april 24th letter there was a map floating around that didn't show the erosion control it didn't show the limits but i do see that on here now okay so that's all i have so you're okay yeah all right, I'll start down with Justin. I'm Other good. Questions? I'm good. Back to you. All right. Uh, the only comment I have is with the lighting. Uh, while uh, I see that it has a motion detector and it's adjustable as far as this output, which is a good thing, but it doesn't meet the, you know, just about the lighting coordinates. Um, you know, the lights have to be downward facing and cut off. So, you know, I don't know if you could take it be directed downwards, but you know. The fixtures themselves are adjustable, so you can adjust the fixtures. I believe they're the catalog cut sheet for that specific fixture was included in the I'm, application. I'm looking at what you submitted, and that's how I can tell that you have a motion detector and it's adjustable. Yes. And it's 15 to 25 watts. I can see that. Um, you know, but looking at it doesn't meet the town standards. You know, it's again, you know, the lights have to be downward facing. Cut off, so it doesn't. The light doesn't shed beyond the, the property line. That's Which is, yeah, I mean, our lighting plan does show that it doesn't protrude even beyond the outside of the parking lot, or the uh, the uh, driveway access area. So it's it wouldn't reach the property. As long as it's downward facing. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have done. Okay. All right. So uh, most of the. Uh, no proper notice went out. Everything was received. Okay. Let the record reflect that the proper notice was sent by mail and the legal notice was published. Uh, again, as I always say, this is not a question and answer session, even though we may answer a question or two. We'll take all public comments into consideration. If you're watching on the stream, you can chat your questions in and we'll read them also into the record. So at this point in time, I'm going to open the public hearing. Uh, So we'll open the public hearing. Please come up to the uh, dais here and state your name. Speak, please. Oh. Please spell your last name if you can. Yeah, just spell your name so make sure oh, that okay, I get it sure. correct. I'll spell it. My, my name is Anthony Stanisha, S as in Sam, T-A-N-I-S-C-I-A. 
Okay, I'm the next door owner, next door neighbor. I live at 47 McBride Road. So that's my house on the- It's like a pen right there. You see a light pen? Oh. That has a little button up on the top. Don't hit us in the eyes. I'm going to hit point yourself. It to, point it the other Good job. Now just press that little button. No. Yeah. Near the end. Near the end. Yeah. See a little near button the, the end, but not on the end. Near the, the tip of it. Oh, near the tip. Ah, got okay. you. Okay, so I live there. Okay, so I have a couple of concerns. Okay, one is this property currently has a non-conforming and derelict structure right there on the property line. I would like to see that cleared out at the same time that this thing happens. Um, it is right on the property line. It is a cement structure about um, it's one it's a one-story structure it's open to the air and it is just currently filled with junk and skunk so it's um, a detriment to my property next door if I, if this is going to happen I think that should go away um, there is also a derelict structure right there I believe it's being shown to be demolished if those two slashes are what I believe them to be. By the way, I'm a licensed architect. Okay, so I, I'm, yeah, is that, so are we, is this, is this that um, a derelict structure being demolished? Yes. Okay. That's good. Um, I have one other um, thing I would like to have done, if possible, um, because you could see how very close this is to my property. I have spent a lot of time um, protecting the privacy of my backyard. I've filled all sorts of landscaping down here. Can we blow back a little bit? Zoom, zoom back a, a, a bit back. Yeah, I, I have put a lot of attention to landscaping here or, and here to protect the views of my backyard. Now this house is kind of, is gonna be here. It, I believe it's going to be a two-story dwelling, and I think it's going to expose my backyard to um, a, a lot of view. Um, I would try to. I, I would like to see that minimized by moving the dwelling back in this direction, if that was possible. Um, why should it be not be closer to the property that it's being separated from, as opposed to being? about 50 50 or closer to my property it is the um it should be the obligation of the person asking for the change to make it as you know less onerous on the neighbor as possible and so i i, I would like to see that pushed as far as the property lines um would allow and, and move it back away from my property but i think that might also give you more room for your um, septic concerns. My well is right there. It's 200 feet deep and it was put in only two years ago. So I would certainly hate to see something going on with it. Although if, if, if I heard correctly, your perk is excellent. It was, it was, it was, I'm not surprised. It's shale. When they dug my well, they brought up a lot of shit. So your perk is good in the area. Anyway, uh, uh, those would be my only objections. I can't really object to um, my neighbor separating a piece of property for his son. Um, I, I, as an architect, that's an appropriate use and thing to do. Uh, so I, I, in, overall, I guess I have to you know, express favor um, for his you know, being allowed to do it, but I would certainly ask that it accommodate my concerns. That's all. Thank you. They're good comments, and we'll absolutely take those into consideration. Our next meeting, we'll go over those, and we'll get you some kind of answers on this. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, let the record reflect that nobody else wants to speak before. Oh, I'm sorry. Michelle. Michelle, you got to control me again. Uh, <laughs> uh, let the record reflect that nobody wants to speak. Anyone else wants to speak for against the application? I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. Motion by Justin, second by John. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. 
So uh, I'm assuming you'll come back on our next meeting, like I said, right? And then we'll discuss those, kind of, you should take those into consideration. Yeah, we'll prepare a formalized response to all the, the questions. Things you could do that could be landscaping, any old ugly buildings or structures probably shouldn't be taken. Out. Yep, we'll address all the comments. All right, we'll address those comments, we'll answer those comments in the next meeting, right? Okay. Thanks, we'll see you then, okay? Thank you very much. Well, I'll give you a time side, probably be the first one. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye. Okay, Mr. Donovan. This is Tim, we're going to do the uh, lot line first. The lot line, Jeannie. Jeannie right? Yeah. Jeannie? Yeah. yeah. Go to the plan. Yeah, go to the plan. There's only one sheet. Yeah, I don't know I why. Think it's whoever created it has to, like, yeah, it's it's a, some type of setting. <laughs> Alright, we're going to do that. We had trouble with one last one, the same scenario. Alright, we'll get through it. Alright, Jim, the floor is yours. Alright, uh, <clears throat> what we have before us is a, um, a property that is, is three existing lots. Uh, it's property that's been owned by the Palmer family for over 40 years. Uh, it's been, it was always consisted of three lots the lot lines on on are depicted on on the subdivision one of the lots was right here across and up and years ago it had a single family dwelling on it uh about 25 years ago we eliminated the access to this this home here it came from a, a dangerous driveway off of 94 and we put in a new entrance over here to facilitate the entire project, uh, making a lot. This is really steep, too. Very, it was a very steep driveway, and then I had a house right here. Um, <clears throat> over the years, uh, we've developed the property. It's always been considered one property, but uh, we, we put the storage sheds here. This, and incidentally, this was, I guess, up to about 10 years ago, or maybe even less an industrial piece of property. Uh, it's been recently zoned to uh, OP, Office Park. Um, this is the existing storage sheds. They've been here for over 20 years. Uh, and behind them, they've always had storage of, of trucks here. Uh, this whole property was used by uh, the Palmer Trucking Company to store trucks, work on trucks. Uh, Everything to do with, with maintenance, it was an industrial use. I think the house may have been rented for a little while and then that, that got discontinued and that that's now totally gone. There's two new buildings that have been put up. Uh, you can see that this building is, is right through a property line. It was always considered that this was like one piece of property. And what we like to do is just straighten the, the project out. We're not uh, trying to build anything. Uh, the original lot line for this other lot went down through right to here. We would like to create a new lot line right here that would facilitate the entire uh, self-storage units, which is a permitted use within the OP zone. Uh, the, the use that we have now on this remaining lot, uh, which we'd like to create, is a pre-existing non-conforming industrial use which was the storage of trucks working on them, 
an office building. We had a dispatch in there. Uh, it's always been used. Right now, it's being used as a bus, bus uh, storage and maintenance right now. Uh, so the use is a pre-existing. I think I wrote all of this stuff down. It's a pre-existing use uh, that was used for 40 years. This is a permitted use uh, that we're creating just around the, the storage sheds. And it's, it's just to facilitate the, uh, you know, different insurance things so we can keep everything separate. Because this is really one entity. This is called GE Properties. Uh, and that's what uh, the farmers keep the storage units in. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, we're creating a 50 foot wide actually right of way here that would go with this parcel in the future. If, so, if, you know, if it ever wanted to get sold or anything, if they ever wanted to do anything in the future. But there's, a, there's, a, there's an existing road here. Everything comes through right through here now. And that's really the application. We're not considering to build anything. Uh, we just want to take three lots and make them two and make it more conforming now. So uh, just a couple of questions I have. How did we build a storage unit that was on crossed over onto another lot? I'm just curious how that happened. Did the board like to prove that years ago? So, um, I don't really, it's really know that. I, when, how long ago were those put in? On the 90s? I didn't know. Yeah, so, all right, uh, John. So, one of the things is a good idea of changing a line and moving the storage back onto another <coughs> lot. It's a good idea at that point. So, yeah, well, <coughs> you can also see we have a building right through a lot line here. That's right. I mean, the whole thing is. Yeah. We want to straighten everything out. So this is Andrew's lane, this one here, that goes out to 94. 94 is up in here? Yes, 94 right. is along the whole so top. The the trucking, which has been here many, many years, no doubt about it. Now you're Definitely. Going here, you have buses going. Yeah, same right use. Here. It's a, it's a so they, existing they have use. access of direct to 94. They're not going to use. They have access out to 94, but this is a dangerous and a steep situation right here. So you would get rid of that access? On no, we, we got rid of it 25 years ago. Even for the trucking stuff? Yes. And the buses? Yeah. yeah. They're coming out on the entrance now? When, when we did the original storage sheds, we designed this road to go right around it and always use that. And then we got rid of, there was a, there was a road that wound around back into here to access this. So none of them go directly to 94? No, we have total frontage. It makes it a legal lot, and we just access it through an easement. And for the board, what Jim was saying here is technically, this would not, trucking and terminals and so on and so forth would be allowed in an OP zone now. <coughs> exactly right. For, exactly right. As long as I can get there. Anything. All right, I'll start down with that. Um, I have no issues. So bottom line, this on the left will be one lot, and this is going to be a second lot right here, right? <coughs> yes, that's it. I have no issue with it. It makes sense. <coughs> so, I'm fine with it. John? I'm good. No objection. Mr. Todd, questions, comments? I guess I just had one part of it. It's just that there's an agreement. If you ever sell this portion, you sell this is your agreement for maintaining. Yeah, I think I put a note on that. Note five. <clears throat> no, I'm just saying, so this road here, the easement, or that right away did, so you're crossing the property line, not two, not one. There's a maintenance agreement for this road. So if this is ever sold off, that there's an agreement who maintains this road. And the existing access to 94 was that that's been demolished for 20 years okay, so that's been gone if, if you read note five that we have over here uh, i'll read it right of way easement and maintenance agreement to be filed in the orange county clerk's office simultaneously with the subdivision map okay, so that'll that'll clear that up and we'll uh we'll file that and we can show it to the attorney for their review if they want uh, but we're going to set that all all up when this map is filed So definitely you could submit the draft of that and yeah. get an easement before you file that and make sure yeah. that's in order. The only other 
top line came through subdivision under your code, your code does have a provision that says a hearing is not required if you're not creating any observable rocks from a top line change. So <clears throat> it's up to the board whether whether or not to hold a hearing on this one. And it, it would be considered a head correction of the subdivision regulation. So let's do a quick I don't see it. We're just straightening out like lot, lot lines that should have been straightened out before. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with it, John. Sure. Just, yep. All right. So no public hearing. Uh, so. Um, so thank you. I think you need to come into the next meeting to show us a couple of things and that. And yeah, I can prepare the the, the maintenance agreement and the the, the uh, easement for access. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Is there any other changes, or do you think we're complete? Are you okay with everything? Are sure you okay with everything? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Nice and simple. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. We're, we've been wanting to do this, and we decided no. let's do it. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Next thing on agenda tonight is. One, I guess we call it 135 from the NMC three uh, subdivision. Then we start to leave the way. I'll bring the map up. Yeah, might bring the map up. I think you'll probably go to sheet two, Don. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we really haven't, th this map has not changed since the last meeting. And I explained what we had done. Uh, we have, at the last meeting, uh, we were required to get the Orange uh, County uh, Highway Department approval. And I don't know, did the board get that letter? Yes. You got the letter, right? Yes. Uh, so we have the entrance uh, <clears throat> approved. Uh, we talked about uh, getting a permit. There's a small little wetlands here that we're going to be crossing with the driveway. And we have a note on that uh, that uh, prior, prior to putting it in, we, we'd get an Army Corps uh, permit uh, crossing. I, th I think Larry asked for a lighting note, I believe, at the last meeting for some type of a lighting note. We agreed to it. I haven't put anything on it because this map has not changed, but any type of approval would have to have that lighting note put on that would comply to the town of Chester Code. And if you wanted me to show you stuff, I could. I could. But we agreed to that last time, but I didn't change these maps, so it hasn't been added. Has to be at least a note just saying that you'll conform to the county. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put that note on. I'll put that note on. And when you're ready to build the house, we'll have something uh, go ahead and make sure that's enforced. And under under the two, county 239, I think they they wanted us to put a note about the bats. And I think we found them. We had, we had already had a note on here. Uh, we had note uh, seven due to potential habitat of the Indiana bat and a northern long eared bat. Tree cutting would be limited to November 1st through uh, March 31st. And we really, honestly, I don't think we have any trees to take down. Believe it or not, this is, a, this is all an open field. There may be one tree here on this line that's, I don't even think there is. It's more of a brushy line. This is all wide open, this is all open field. There's nothing here, this is all fields. But we have the note on anyway that was requested by the the county in their review and you do have the lighting note on there as well. no i don't have it on yet but i will put it on i see it on the version i have do do i have it on From March, number yeah we do have it on yeah note number 10. <laughs> Uh, 
Yes, on both sheets. Okay. So we also got into a discussion earlier on when the original seven lot subdivision went into place. Was this, you know, coming in so quickly afterwards going to cause to go over the five acre rule here? That's what we talked about. And then it appears that Darius went and on one of the lots, lot seven, I think it was, I'm not sure exactly, uh, you know, over, over developed it in that. So Lexa got involved. Lexa, you're comfortable to give us an uh, email or letter of last time that you're going to enforce, make sure that that gets back into compliance. Uh, For the most part. I'm sorry. For the most part, it is, but I'm just waiting for the final landscaping for So, Jim, with this, I mean, you and uh, we had some discussions on this in the past. That does this really apply? Because is it separate? We didn't put any kind of no subdivision rule on any of the lots, really, as long as they could engineer them and so and so forth. But uh, does I think you had said last time, even with this lot being added, it would keep it down to around 4.98 or something. Yeah, it's it's still within the threshold the way I have mapped it. If if builders or somebody buys one of these lots and violates the uh, the code, it, it's a code violation, really. It, it's, I mean, they're not supposed, they're only supposed to clear what I have on that map, which could be six tenths of an acre, could be an acre, or, you know, but the, the, we don't have any control over that. That's really, Alexis takes care of it like she did at the building department. She was notified. Larry had mentioned it. We checked it out. I went out with Fusco. We agreed. Yeah, it looks like he did a little bit more than he should have. Uh, and everybody was honest. And uh, uh, Alexa sent a letter, and I, I believe uh, Dario is taking care of it, right? Yeah. I mean, it happens. This, you know, it happens with, with, with builders, I guess. They're not perfect. They don't follow my plans totally. But it was addressed, and uh, I think we've taken care of it. Okay. All right, Justin, we'll start that in. Um, I'm good. You're okay. With you're good. Larry, right. I'm good with you know subdividing these two lots, you know the one lot into two lots. You know, I'm I'm okay with that. Uh, there are some trees being cut down up near the house. You can see it on there. Some trees are cutting down. But getting back to the point for lot seven, I mean. The removal was pretty dramatic. It wasn't just a little bit more. It was pretty dramatic. And as far as from my perspective, it hasn't been addressed yet. I drove by past it today, and it's still open, and no lancy had been has been put in or anything else like that. And if, maybe I'm mistaken, but the person that cut all those trees was the applicant for the subdivision, so should have known better. You know, it's not like someone else bought the lot and they didn't really know. It's the developer who subdivided it. That did the, that action, so we should have known better. You know, I understand you moved the septic. I'm okay, fine. But obviously, it was a reason to move the septic. But then, you should be putting trees and shrubs and stuff like that and other somewhere else to make up for that. So far, that hasn't been done. So there should be something in writing saying from the applicant that that will be done. Okay. Because you know it's. Without this change, you know, we were at the border of five acres, and then it was dramatic. Because even a lot six, when you're moving the driveway, you cut some more trees there, which hasn't been accounted for. So, you know, he needs to do the right thing. He needs to commit in writing that he will replace a lot of the trees that have been removed, you know, with new trees and shrubs. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, Alexa will, will take care of make sure that gets done, but it should be in writing that that will happen. Okay, I mean, it's... Uh, the other point that you know, Don had mentioned, this is you came back right after the, the one subdivision. You know, a year later, you're coming up with subdividing one lot into another one. I mean, I believe that's called segmentation. I'm not sure why you're doing that, but you know, it sort of you know raises concern with me. I don't think the developer was forthcoming and forthright in doing it. I'm sure he must have had the intentions all along to do it. Why he didn't do it up front, I don't know. But it raises mistrust on my part. Okay, um, that's not the way that should be, you know, be done. 
Um, the other thing, um, Don, I don't know if we could put in there uh, that there's no further subdivision of these lots. I, I don't know if we could ask that. Ashley's going to have to answer that. I think I'm not no, I understand. Yeah, there's not. So typically, if it was a, a cluster subdivision, you'd have that ability um, to go and avoid the requirement to restrict it, that there be no further subdivision. But you're, um, you know, I don't know whether this, I don't think these specific lots would be able to be subdivided with, you know, the dimensions of them and where the, the houses are proposed, but you would be able to restrict, you know, the rest of the land. Okay. You know, we did bring up segregation, which is a Good point. That's why we did look at the disturbance all cumulatively. That, you know, but if, if it had been proposed at that time, that would have been really just creating additional potential issues on your underkeeper. I believe the applicants represented, or their consultants represented, that the applicant has no plans to further develop, um, you know, this area. You know, next year, you know, you don't have any plans to come in. And, and further, uh, well, I don't have any, but you can't restrict a 15 acre lot from being yeah, I'm not saying that you can you know. the, for purposes of making sure that there is no yeah. impermissible segmentation and you know, you would address anything in the future similar to how you did here, you just add in, you know, it's part of the same, it should be part of the same project, and then how much disturbance and all that kind of thing, you can certainly still. Right, thank you. I mean, I guess, you know, this should have been done in the first place when you subdivided it. You know, you're coming back again and you're using up all our time to do this again. You know, you're going to come back in another year, you know, to, you know, take up, you know, the planning board's time again. That's a concern I have. You know, the precedent has been set, you know, and, you know, I, I just want the applicant to be, you know, forthcoming and upright and say, this is what we're doing. So we understand that. Well, I, I believe that, Larry, this is uh, the, the unique part of this lot was that it did have a lot of frontage. It had excessively a lot of frontage, and uh, we, we, we didn't consider doing it until he, he really looked at it. And then he said, there's so much frontage, and we're doing it all by the code, and it was allowed. And you're right, maybe we should have done it in the beginning. We're not asking for any variances. We're just asking for what we're allowed to do. Yeah, no, I understand that. Okay, thank you. That's all I have done. Thank you. Oh, that's it. Without answering, just waving your hand. Here. Are you going to require uh, one hand up and two hands no? Uh, are you going to require Darius to put something in writing or plan in front of you, and that's what will be enforced yes. to make sure that so? Uh, yes. Yeah. So we're requiring a landscape. Right. That was so going to put this lot back in the, in the compliance, stormwater compliance and disturbance compliance. Right. Right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Todd, anything? Costco, I think, said everything was good on your part, right? Yes, ma'am. Ashley, anything else? Or? No, just um, we did prepare a draft, maybe separate, and then draft Prepared. Everyone should have got a copy of this. Sure. So the draft <clears throat> negative declaration under CCOs is going through. It's similar to um, the analysis that we've done for the prior subdivision because this map will have led the same concerns as far as the bats and the archaeological impact that had been you know, addressed at the last time. Required some map notes and submission to ship only that they're going to be bridge there so that same note is being required uh, for this plan and the only other item would be um, wetlands and only will be required to get the required permits from the army corps or the county sure. okay so uh someone want to make a motion to grant a neg deck based on Ashley's resolution to uh this two lots of I'll make the motion. Motion by Larry, second by Jackie. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then. It looks very similar to what Dave does. And 
comment. So you want to go right to the conditions of approval or sure. it's a typical resolution of conditions satisfied before final approval. Going over them? Yeah. So the first is that the approval is subject to compliance with the terms, conditions, notes, and all provisions contained within and on the plan reference above. Number two, prior to signing the plan, the drawing index um, sheet one should be revised to the, the description of sheet three and four match the titles on the actual plan sheet. Number three, prior to signing the plan, note nine on sheet one and sheet two shall be revised um, to just modify that language a little to explain the properties in an archaeological executive area, partially within the town of Chester Ridge Preservation Overlay District. Number four, the plan shall not be signed until receipt of a letter from Busco Engineering and Land Serving, the Town of Chester Planning Board Engineer, certifying that all engineering requirements have been satisfied. Number five, prior to signing of the plans, the clearing violation on Lot 7 of the NMC 3 LLC subdivision, tax map parcel 13139.2, shall be fully rectified to the satisfaction of the building inspector, slash code enforcement officer, and town engineer so as to not exceed the amount of disturbance previously approved for that subdivision. Number six, compliance with all applicable statutes, rules, regulations, including but not limited to Council 24. Number seven uh, discusses the Orange County Department of Public Works approval, and that the approval is subject to the issuance of a highway work permit for the driveway in substantially the same location and configuration as shown on the plan. Should the work permit uh, issued require changes in either their location or configuration from what's shown on the plan, the applicant will have to return for further review of the planning board. Number eight is that the approval subject to the issuance of a permit from the Army Corps Engineers and County Chester for the wetland disturbance activities on lot two. Proof of those permits will need to be submitted before uh, building permit can be issued. And number nine uh, deals with the recreation requirements and that uh, by adopting the resolution, the planning board determines based on its present and anticipated need for future park and recreational facilities in the town. The park land should be created as a condition of approval and because there's because parks of size adequate to meet the town's requirements can't be located on the plat pursuant to section 274 of town law of New York requires the applicant to deliver payment in the amount of two thousand dollars the amount set by the town of Chester for recreation fee in lieu of actual park land prior to the issuance of uh, final approval, so that will have to be before the signs are signed. Okay, and then you have your standard general conditions. Okay. All right, so someone wanted to make a motion based on this resolution to grant uh, conditional final approval. Most motion by Justin, second by John. All in favor? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, you're all set. Uh, okay, thank, you. thank right. you very much. Okay, thanks. Oh, <clears throat> okay, next thing on the agenda tonight is revised site plan approval for the tin barn. Mr. Gats. Blue. Start with the plans, or yes, if you bring up our we have three plans. I think the first sheet is really the the key one. Okay. Good evening. I'm Dave Getz from Engineering Properties in Goshen. And we're here to discuss the Tin Barn Brewing site. I think you're probably all familiar with its location on the uh, Kings Highway Bypass Road, County Road 13A. Um, the plans we've submitted uh, provide an update compared to previously approved plans in 2018 and 19 to show uh, 
what's going on at the site, what's been changed since that time. For example, additional parking spaces have been shown, have been uh, provided on the site. So we give you an updated plan to reflect more accurately what's on the property. And um, we provided a narrative and some other information regarding um, activities on the site, especially with regard to potential impacts to the environment and uh, neighboring properties. I'm here also with uh, Dale and Lauren Van Pamwen, owners and operators of the site. So, should we? How do you want to discuss the uh, the to topics? The you sent or, or, uh, the... Yeah, we. I'll go through the narrative. Is that yeah? Okay. I think... Okay, so we have a, um, a three-page narrative with an aerial photo attachment. Um, right. So in that, those bullet points are probably a good place to start. Um, they summarize down a little bit further, please, Don. Roll down. Right, yeah, the uh, that summarizes the changes uh, that we're expecting to discuss with you. Additional indoor seating compared to previously approved plans. The addition of outdoor seating with a fenced in picnic area and a deck structure. That deck is raised and I believe part of the review of your board will be architectural review of that that structure. Um, there are additional parking areas shown on the site compared to what you'd previously seen. Uh, we want to discuss the, the impact of outdoor music that uh, occurs at certain times on weekends, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Of course, specifically with, uh, ref with respect to noise levels and impacts to uh, other properties. Um, the, uh, the, the applicants, the owners, have taken measures to block sounds, block the sound and uh, reduce noise levels um, emanating from the site. And uh, we're ready to discuss uh, those measures and, and you know, your take on what can be done, what if what's been done is acceptable and what should be done uh, going forward. And we also want to talk about lighting. Um, I know that uh, Mr. Fusco's letter uh, asks about pole locations and all. So um, I can talk about that issue right now if you'd like. The, the pole locations we show on the site plan are as built locations. They are different from what was shown on plans approved by your board in the time frame of 2018, 2019. Um, but uh, the Van Pamelins will, will tell us all that they have not changed any pole locations since they purchased the property. And when was that done, uh, Dale? I think it was 2000. Uh, okay. Was it 2018 or 18? Okay, so. It was 19. It was 19. So they've been owners for about four years now. And all, all the poles were pretty existing. Um, so, um, do you want to go into spe any specific? Some of the lighting, though, has changed the top of the pole. I'm talking about the one, the one in the far back, those two bulbs right now. We, when it comes to the lighting, the, we did put the additional lights on that. Uh, the back area, frankly, I'd like as much light back there as possible because we have young kids that are finishing up their shift at like 11 o'clock at night walking to their cars. They're supposed to walk two at a time, but they don't always, you know, do whatever this is going to do. So if what's there is not acceptable or, or doesn't need code, we will, of course, change it to what it does. But I would like that area to be, you know, the maximum allowed. Uh, and the, the, the 
ones in the back, the two lights went out, and the person who read the device for us said that those are just like, you don't buy those lights anymore. Uh, so we have uh, we have LEDs, but they may not they may not exactly be the color. Uh, if they don't, we will change them to what does. So I think you'll have to give us some kind of plan to make sure we're not leaking out. Yes. That's typically what we do with anybody else in the Yeah. But we have sheet three of this set is a lighting plan. Is a lighting plan. Yes. And it does propose, not doesn't propose any changes to the poles, but uh, a lighting consultant um, provided recommendations to uh, change some fixtures. Um, the following page after that, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry. It's page two, I believe. Those are the, those are details of the fixtures, but we have a, a plan that shows foot candle location. Yeah. Go up. Oh. Yes, that's it. So in this drawing, the bypass road is along the bottom edge of the site there. Um, your engineer picked up that uh, the southwest parking area, which is in the upper left as we look at the sheet this way, has some areas with lighting levels quite low. Um, and we're willing to make adjustments, make uh, you know whatever changes are needed. So we view this as our first um, pass at providing you with the, the plan you need to be comfortable that we're both uh, lighting the site adequately but not affecting neighbors. Uh, I will point out that along um, the north in this picture is uh, in this plan is to the right. So uh, east and west um, would be the county highway and then the railroad at the top of the sheet is the western side. Those are both properties that are non-residential. Um, but of course we are, we will be, and we are uh, being very con uh, concerned about making sure we don't have lights spill onto residential properties. So I guess I'll ask, do you have specific questions or yeah, comments on lighting? So the, go ahead. There's the on the left side of the west portion of the section. Well, it's not a sheet, but this, that light picture, that pole on the existing site plan is probably more west. That's uh, picking up in this area. Okay. On your existing plan. So it doesn't represent if that's existing plan and then the new code that you did for them. Okay. Are not landing in the same spot. That was the one trigger of it. Okay. Um, and the foot candle levels are, I, there's no spillage on the end of the park, so that was good. But you do have you know, parking areas that are at the point one level. You want to try to go to so many, one of those areas, even the north parking lot, you're into the point ones and point twos. So in this area, it's very dark. Here. Dale, that's the area you're concerned with. My dark and then up the, here is very, I mean, a lot of the parking areas are. Right. Very we have we have two poles, the one the one up top, then we have the second and the third pole down. Uh, the it, it's a balance, I guess, of what they did on light. What light will not spill onto the neighbor's property or yes. be seen by that and, and what will provide enough, you know, for candles to light that parking lot. Uh, so I think the help would be put the full nature of the fixture. Have your lighting sold for the photometrics, and you can see the photometrics, and you can see where the, you're having maximum lighting. Where, you know, instead of just the uh, the grid of the yeah, instead of the grid, yeah, it's hard to read. The photometrics give you, you know, looks like a butterfly, right? You know, how it spills out. Sure. But it look, you're illuminating the entryway when you have to illuminate more of the parking areas. Kind of like that, yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of areas up in here. You know, there's a lot of areas that are dark. Right. We did have we did have we had one facing that way, but we removed it based on the fact that we thought it would bother, you know, up in Sugar Hill. But I guess the, 
all the lights have to be flat at zero and shielded, correct? And shielded. And right. certain, you can't be over you know, 25 feet. And then there's an equation for the property line. Right. So your footage right. divided by one third or something. Yeah, you know, there's an equation in that overall. But I'm confident that the day in I just to try to get this thing to figure out what. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we, we will definitely pursue that. Um, so before we leave the lighting, let's just start down the and let's try to take this topic like that. Uh, an example, if you go down to the next sheet down, John, you would please. Down this way. Yeah, go down if you would please. It shows uh, right there. Uh, this light, look like just. That's right there. That light there doesn't conform. Don't, don't forget, according to lighting ordinance, everything has to be have to be downward facing and fully cut off. Okay, so that light is not going to cut it. You know, this one, um, I doubt that has cut off. That's you know, it, that's a broadcast light, and there's no cut off or shielding on that. So there are manufacturers that do make those type of lights um that uh, do have shielding and do control where how the light is broadcast so you would have to, you'd have to change that so you know because if you use something like this one here it's going to blast out like crazy and it'll affect it by neighbors and stuff like that on especially probably on the west mostly and within sugar off itself so you need to make sure you, you know you change your light on that okay so what area are you concerned about with the employee like yeah, the behind the building? So is there some way to address that where it's a you know a timing event so that it is a, since it's a security issue or is that like raising a little bit of that age or something like that? That was so good we said it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. Because that's justifiable, I would think. Yes, I agree. That it, they could be on a timer. I believe that we close at 10 p.m. They usually take about an hour to clean up. And then they're, you know, talking to each other and walking to their cars and things like that. I believe that by 11.30, we have to set up a timer. Just that. And all our lights are on timers currently? Or at least go to, I don't know. I don't know if this is possible, but it would be good if you could get it so that for other security purposes, it went down to a certain level so you would see if somebody's there or, you know, in that, the parking lot that shouldn't be there. That is that can possible. Add, they, there are manufacturers that make them dimmable. Right. You can set uh, anywhere from 100% down to 10%. Um, they, there is manufacturers that make yeah, those kind of lights for that. Yeah, we've worked on shopping great. centers that have done that after a certain hour. It went to a small fraction of the... John, I'm good. I'm good. All right, so we're okay with the lighting. We can make these lights for that. All right, so let's go to the next uh, topic. So let's talk about the zoning and use of the property um, sites in the LBSL zoning district. Um, we believe the existing use is allowed. Um, but the number of seats, the use of the site is uh, much more intense than what you saw in, in plans four or five years ago. So the current plan shows a total of 276 indoor seats. If you page down just slightly, there you go, Don, thank you. Um, and 292 outdoor seats. This is not proposing an addition to what's there now. This is um, a report on what the seating is now. And as you know, they've been very successful, very busy operation. So we seek approval of this seating level. Um, they, I think we already have. I mean, don't we have the inside covered already? Dave, is about, do you have it I, I, on the plan side? I, I don't recall. What's, yeah, when what exists? So, so the board yeah. can. Lauren? On the existing 2019 plan, there are the. Um, occupancy laws, and it actually had, we have a total of 315 occupants approved, approved within the building currently, and it breaks it down for the tables, workers, all of that. So I, it should I, be approved. I, I have those plans. 
Okay, great. Just, just so, was there a comparison on the amended site plan map that shows current, approved, and, and newly proposed? Just so order of magnitude. Yeah, okay. well. 276, I mean, is it approved for 270 or 14? You know, because then, then you get an idea of the order of magnitude. We'll, we'll, we'll clarify that. I think the numbers right, are on there, but. Something that yeah. 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 I think I addressed that in the letter, too. Yeah. No, I read out the letter. If you signed it, I would read it. But. <laughs> so, uh, Lauren did email a plan today. Did do you have that available to show on the screen? Wait, one of those others. It was the last one that that, that shows the uh, occupancy data. I believe it's the CD fire sheet. The one that you sent in, you mean uh, uh, yes, uh, Yeah, the one I sent this morning. I had to remember to download it and touch it. you ask for a plan or the one Ward sent it? Ward sent one in today. Was, yeah, the one she sent today. Was, all right, I apologize. I think it showed the fire exit. Is that what it showed? Yeah. It did show the fire because it has this the one. C D G one. Yes. Yeah, right in the middle. I can't read that from here, but you say the numbers are 315? Three. Yeah, right in the middle, if you want to zoom in, it's 315 occupants with 231 tables and chairs. So as you suggested, we will put together a table on, on the first sheet that provides. Yeah, I just think that gives a, a good point of reference for what the order back into this. Right. All right, so questions or comments on the occupancy rates? No. So they're just looking to have more people in the building as it already is, more or less? Yes. You're not proposing to add to this uh, so capacity, we're correct? To it. I think we're more just shifting, if anything, because we were approved for less, but we had so I guess for everybody's clarification, do you want us to show that the capacity could be the 315 that the that the building interior allows? Right now we're showing 276 indoor seats, 292 outside. I might be getting lost between seats versus group occupants also. Hmm. Because occupants include staff. Yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll clarify those yeah, numbers. Yeah. Okay, just just so yeah. Is what I yes. That's good. Right. Right. Exactly. So. Um, so John. Yeah. I have a plan for nineteen. The parking spots go to sixty-five, and now we're going to. So I think occupancy count versus you know, building code. Unless you, you know, correct me. But the building code, the occupancy count of the building, if you define it per square foot of the building, you get an occupancy count. And the plans are just for parking and really kind of an estimated amount of people. And now it looks like you're doing 200 and some people outside and 200 inside. Right. The plan's original. So the occupancy code on the building is different than the parking. Can I address that? That's actually, too, I'm, I believe that we made a mistake. We, when we purchased the property, they were um, they had 158 shell. I think that we made a mistake on our um, site plan that went down to those 65 spots because we didn't show anything in the back. Um, the other thing is that I don't know if that, I, I don't know how this affects it, but there's a seasonality to the business. When everybody's when it's raining, everybody wants to be inside. There's nobody outside. When it's nice, everybody's outside. There's nobody inside. So the those seats are basically either in use inside or in use outside. It doesn't really. There's never a time when we have that total of people. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> but the no, there really isn't a time when the inside's filled and the outside's filled. It just doesn't doesn't happen. So I don't know. They you know I think that's two separate issues. One thing is looking at this. 
seeing the existing site plan here and looking at this proposed or existing proposed, there's a big difference. So the boards could see that difference. If you could show some kind of contrast to the existing conditions that were approved, and then you knew, because I'm looking at a whole plan, and I see stark areas. And then the new area, there's a lot of things that Right. Yeah. You want, your first comment was to clarify what's been changed yeah. and what's proposed. Now that's it makes sense to, that we do that. Parking or an overall site. You, know, you look at the existing that was approved and the overall site. There's a lot. See, the, the misconception on the parking. What happened here was in 2009, uh, 19, on February 2019, and Jeremy brought the planning. If I bring that plan up, this is February 2019. They purchased Genix. Property. Genic was approved for 158 spots. It had a parking count. It's a signed site plan that they bought. And, uh, and, uh, it showed all the parking around the building. Now, the stuff has changed in some of them, but they were approved for. Uh, so, if we look at the uh, February 2019 plan, we talked about needing 68 spaces for what they thought they were going to need for the business they were going to do, but they were banking or uh, we're asking to use a site plan of 158. That's what happened. Okay. Somehow along the way, Jeremy decided to erase that line. I don't know why he did that. Uh, and that kind of disappeared. But it was always, it's on the tape, it's on, on the, I can bring the February one up here. And, show her, and I also have Janix, I can show you Janix. Okay. It's assigned by Rachel Hansen, you know, when Janix was developed around 2000. I'm not sure exactly when that happened. So that's where it got a little bit on misconception. So I think they need to, you know, show us what's changed because it doesn't 100 percent match that site plan either right now. They might have, uh, they may have 170 spots now. Well, so yeah. If you would please turn to sheet one of our site plans again, we do have Back a to your site plan. Yes, parking table of calculations it's near the center, a little bit lower on that sheet. Okay. Yeah, um, there's a table of parking requirements to the right of the bulk requirements. Uh, to the right of the right. Yeah. Right there. Okay, so let's close this up. Too. So, based on the numbers we're saying exist on the site, as far as as far as seating, um, these numbers in here, your code requires just one parking space per four seats. So. Um, that calculation shows that based on the um, the staffing, the indoor seating, and outdoor seating all combined, 158 seats are required. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, 158 parking spaces. And in the lines below that, we summarize what we show now as existing spaces on the site, and that totals 173. Now, Dale, in all honesty, when he has a really busy time, 173 may not cover everybody, correct? Yeah. So they don't all come four to a car, of course. So we don't want to provide the minimum. We want to provide as many as we can to make his operation run as smoothly as possible. But I think those numbers are what you're looking for us to provide as far as the uh, the current current situation on the site. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to have 173 parking spots, you don't want to show a site plan to show 158. You want to see. And, and there's been some changes to what Janet's would. Yes. Enjoy. Uh, so we need to have an updated one and show us where they are. Is there any stormwater issues because of that or anything else? Well, yeah, that's we'll another topic that. that we'll be discussing, yes. Um, there was also some issues where we got a little ambitious in the back where we hit somebody else's property line. In yes, the back too, right? that's, that's right. So um, over the past few months, they had that area surveyed and uh, staked in the field to understand exactly where the property lines are. And if, if you could zoom out, we do show really the only construction 
we propose on this site plan is to the right edge there where there's a shaded area along the property line. Right. Um, that hatched area along the property line. Yes, that's an area that was disturbed. The disturbance did extend um, off the site a slight amount and it's, be, it's been regraded and is being restored, but the hatched area does not have uh, vegetation growing on it yet. So we, we call for that to be stabilized with uh, topsoil seed and mulch. Um, so. We also, the, um, the cross-hatched area is not where we went already. It's up. Oh. That is, that's actually all our property. Okay, you went down. This this area in here, this is the area that that uh, was extended past the property line. Um, so. You mentioned stormwater. That's another topic that uh, Mr. Fusco's letter raises. Oh, well, let's just stay okay. with Mark. Just for okay, so sure. One, one question, Alexis, that you talked about over in this area here. Was there a violation issue when they went over? I see that. Because they were already in the process of fixing it. And but there was a violation, but they didn't on the property. Right. And Mark, you said that is now that resolved and the neighbor. I did not go and check, but I did speak to the owner of the and she said it, that they were all working together. And everything is going to be okay. So, all right. That's the area. Yes. That's right. So before we leave the parking, I go into stormwater and things like that. Any questions or comments on the parking? So where did I go last time? Going back to if you go back to 2000, you know, with the uh, Janik, and had 158 or whatever parking spaces. Go, go back. No, don't take that. Oh, go back to what I can bring Janet's up. I actually have Janet. Yeah, yeah, right there. But uh, you can leave that up. But all this area here was parked, including this, which is now structured stuff. So th they eliminated that and then moved down to the southern part on a slope to put parking in. I questioned the grade of the parking. You know, some of it steep, and I don't know if it's within code. How? Yeah, there's a cross loop. That's all out of that cross. Yeah, yeah, I mean that. I I question about that. You know, so. So that's what I'm saying. I think they have to come up and show us the parking, what yes. effect it might have on the stormwater or anything like that. So, so Jackie. Yeah, I think it needs to be more visible what was there, what's there now. We need to see. Yeah. Well, I think we're, we're going to use some colors to, to really distinguish what was from what time period. Um, but as you look at the, that portion of the plan right there, that main parking area that you see in the center is the new gravel parking area that's new since the Genac times. This area here, because Genac was where the septic was, and that's, now it's serviced by sewer and water. That's correct. So that Game right. That normally we're going to have parking there because we've had a septic system. Yes. Yeah, that, that used that used to be grass. Now it's gravel, so we have more water runoff now. That's correct. So w with regard to stormwater and the question about uh, the SWIP stormwater pollution prevention plan, um, this is the biggest area of disturbance that's occurred since the uh, the Van Pamelins have owned the property, and in totaling this area plus any other areas they've disturbed is still well under an acre in, in total. So uh, for a commercial site like this, the one acre is the threshold for the New York State DEC's uh, requirements to provide a full SWIP. So my understanding is that because we're less than that acre, um, we, we need to provide a SWIP, but that consists of erosion control measures and those type of things, not uh, water quality basins or detention to provide um, peak flow reduction. Um, I've been to the site and I've talked to Van Pamelins, even with heavy rains such as last weekend, uh, the drainage facilities, the, the pipes and catch basins and all that are on the site function well. So we don't think there's a need 
from the functionality point of view to provide new structures or new drainage systems. Um, one of the comments in the review letter from Mr. Fusco's office was that um, this, we didn't provide soil testing or other uh, information to, to justify that to be permeable paving, which gravel can be if it's, if it's constructed in, within certain parameters. We didn't intend to do that. We, we didn't claim it was imper uh, that it was pervious. Um, and like I mentioned, um, because we're under that one acre of disturbance, I don't think it's required that we would have to provide pervious pavement. Dale mentioned that to me uh, today that some of the um, area for the outside seating in the area where you mentioned, Larry, that the, the parking was shown on previous plans is uh, the, uh, the land is covered with the, uh, artificial grass, I guess right. you call it. And that's a, a permeable surface. So again, we haven't done calculations, but that is something that does offset the other areas where um, uh, pavement or gravel has been added to uh, that would create additional runoff. Right. Okay. Todd's anxious to see. No. I just think somebody has to review the split. If there's an existing retention pond, I think the bottom will work on the there. I think this additional parking area is cumulative to the site. So I think that if the stormwater structure were taking runoff from this portion and it's going into the retention pond, I think, and that's what we had said was a review of the split. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Post and pre. I know there's pre, post, post, pre on this project. Is there some things going on here? You get to a point where somebody has to review this so you keep adding parking and park. If you didn't build that out, then it's, now it's impervious. Like you said, you can do a gravel and you can kind of get it to be pervious, but now it's runoff is per, you know, impervious right now. It's going to existing facilities. So some of the site, the back part drains to that retention basin, but the, the new gravel pavement here doesn't actually, there's a pipe uh, or a series of pipes that collect runoff from that part of the site. I can kind of can highlight it here. Um, this is a drainage structure there and that discharges towards to the west towards the railroad. So that, that water doesn't now or never was part of a system that, that drained to the detention in the back. But we can provide some calculations. This is, again, existing in Dakota's best. Okay. Right. And, okay. And another factor is that there are no residential properties nearby or adjacent that would be affected by uh, increased runoff from a portion of the site. Really, the water here enters swales that run along the railroad tracks, which end. Enter, uh, empty into the large wetland. So I don't believe there's any structures or homes or anything that would be uh, directly impacted adjacent to the site. But aren't, but uh, you know, you have the Sugarloaf District itself um, that could be affected, could it not? If the water levels, if the water that runoff uh, raises a level in the wetlands, could could not the buildings in Sugarloaf itself be affected? I can't say it would have no impact, but looking at the, the size of this site compared to the size of the watershed to that wetland, we can take we can provide some numbers related to that. Just to consider. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, so that's good. Okay, um, so we've talked about um, zoning, driveway and parking, seating and music. So let's talk about, I guess, music and sound are certainly an important uh, topic to discuss. Um, I'll just highlight what's in our, our report here. Live music's proposed on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, Dale, do you want to add anything about that? Uh, we do Fridays, generally six we stop by nine uh, yeah, it's, 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 uh but we now you know 
stop in all of you a little bit before nine. We don't do every Saturday, every other Saturday. We do Sundays from two to five. Um, it, it was a bit of a learning curve for us, but what we do now is we have the best computer uh, that is that we always use for every minute. Uh, you know, uh, and, and we do it in front of the van, usually about 15, 20 feet. Keep, it, keep the van below 85. If they're not compliant, we actually stop. We then stop to you. Because they're like, they're turning down. And they're like, they're back down. But, um, but we keep it out. Our managers are all you know, uh, able to use the, uh, the stop message here as well. Um, we also did a test. Recently, at, at, at very high volume with some really heavy duty speakers, and uh, I can probably like that because we have that right. I don't have it handy. I don't have it handy actually. Okay. We submitted oh, some plans, a couple yeah. of plans, to work right. um, where where that they are. Uh, this is kind of in combination with also with that uh, with the shipping container. The shipping container was on site. Uh, we bought it from the Gen X, and uh, I know we had to we had to move it 20 feet away from the building. Uh, Jim Farr, you know, required that, so we moved it actually twice. I believe that where it sits right now, which is right in here, correct? Right here is an excellent sound block. When you when you walk out one side of it, you hear something. You walk behind it. You know, you walk past it to the deck and the, and the vessel level strikes. We put it directly in line between the stage and this is the, the stage uh, there. You know, it, there's a house behind the candle shop that, that I'm using. You know, so this literally like cuts that off. Uh, we can move the container. We, you know, it's, it's quite a few guys where it sits, or at least like. Um, but I think it's a benefit right now where it is. They've also added um, below the raised level of the deck canvas barriers to help block sound also. Side in the back? Yes, right? On the back of the deck side, yeah. Right. I of that. And the container serves the side. Right. Those are new since last season, is that right? Those, yeah, the, the canvas. Good. So I think with sound, which is not an easy, um, an easy thing to measure or calculate, I think the most important thing is you have an applicant and an owner who wants to be proactive and measure on the site. I know we could, we could try to provide numbers and we've worked on other projects where someone was asked to do a sound study and the sound engineer ended up telling us, listen, this is for music, this is for uh, a system where you have an amplifier and a volume control, they're more used to doing sound studies for generators or fans that are, you know, a constant noise or a noise that they can't mitigate. They can't turn the volume up or down or, or a pile driver during construction. But he said that the key thing here is if you have control over that noise, it's to have someone who's going to be actively monitoring it and, um, we know there have been complaints. The police, right, have had to come to the site at times. But yeah. but you've been proactive in providing measures. And I think very importantly, we'll be monitoring to make sure that what leaves the site is only a reasonable level. So this chart here, it gave us two charts. This one here was the, the, the noise levels at, I think, right? At, uh, not off the property. This is on the this property. is on the property. On the yeah. property. And then you also right. gave us this one. So the board should make sure that you know kind of focus on this. So this is the one and then there was one on the neighborhood. It's the other one. So this one here, it's a little hard, you know, every time blow it up when you read it and but it took these are the different points it took. Uh, so everyone should take a look at this A to H. Putting on the decimal levels and where they are, and then they identify exactly where the spot you take. So, Justin, I'll start down with you. So, <clears throat> I liked this. The only thing I would say is is there any way to prove that these are legitimate results? 
Not that I don't believe them, but they were you, submitted. You, can, uh, you could certainly have your own study done, absolutely. I'm just saying, is there a way to? Yeah. Well, we could, we could, like, we could do anything. We can hire somebody or have somebody come in and try to verify, you know, set up a time and uh, time verify that, uh, you know. That the, I guess what I'm saying is instead of having to get a whole sound engineer involved for something that should just be like effectively at least in my opinion like a notarized type thing or, or like you know we, we witness perk tests is there a way to witness this and just make sure that these are legitimate numbers because if they are they're pretty good in my opinion at least I, 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 well, we could have someone sign off a professional sign off I don't know, that they witnessed or they were at the point where they took these measurements and sign off on that map and let it we can find time. I mean, you know, one, one good thing we have here is we have the ability to hire who we think we need. So none of us are capable of doing that. Just the title? So, uh, that would have to be planned on a night that they have music or something like that. The, the only downside I, I can imagine if you have a, uh, you know, death left with coming in versus, uh, you know, um, <laughs> on the rate, you know. And, you know, Definitely showing your age, Stan. I'm old. Uh, but, you know, not coming out. How about ACDC? So the bottom line is uh, we, we should do something like it. What you're saying is notarize the thing. You know, that's right. You know, so now so it's a task that we could uh, try to find out if it's possible to help us or, uh, or whatever. Not that we're doubting you, but it's no, it make, makes that. sense. Oh, sure. No, different. Yeah. We no we, we, it's we actually can, better for us too for yeah to be, can, to be verified. So we could coordinate something with you on a Friday night or Saturday night or something like that. You know, I think it's probably more important on the evening ones that are that's just my thing than it is on the. So that's a good point. Yeah, because so, I mean, so I'm sure the rest of the board will call the board in a minute, but I'm sure the rest of the board can say yes. Yeah, I would say. John, anything else, Justin, before I leave? No, I mean, I, I, I'm happy they did this because that's pretty proactive yeah. because I was going to say, well, nice that it's whatever it is on the property, but what is it everywhere else? And we probably have that data, so that's that's good. Yeah, it just seems like they're doing their due diligence, which is nice to see. We did the same thing at the castle. Uh, I, I don't know if you've got most of the board, but uh, we made them – Leslie and uh, uh, Cliff lived on the other side, and they were pretty like a structure and have some bands and stuff like that. Uh, we had them, uh, I'm not sure if we hired them, but we had a certified thing about decibel levels and so on and so forth. So, definitely. Can so, so. Exactly. And I think, like you said, if you want to be proactive about it because you are respectful for, and it is something that's trackable. There's a violation, or if there's somebody being called out to the site, that's something that can be tracked. So you can see that that you're trying. And I think this is important. So I think it's important to have this on the validated. I appreciate uh, some of the data you're providing. Uh, I go back to you know you're doing music outside without getting approval for having music outside. So you're coming here asking forgiveness to let you do that in the future. Um, I have no problem with music inside, you know, because then your neighbors aren't going to hear it. But it's been documented that your know, neighbors across the way have complained about the music. Now, if it's canned music that you control, you can set the dial and you can keep the noise down. But anytime you get a band, the band's going to do whatever it feels like. And frankly, while you have monitoring equipment, your staff is, I'm sure, busy as all get out, satisfying its customers. So when is it gonna have time to sit there and read the monitor and say, oh, you're too loud, T turn it down. And as you stated, they do, and then five minutes later, they're back up again. That's the problem with bands outside. You know, the owner, I, I know you mean well and you try your best to do it, but you don't have full control over the bands. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna do what they want. They think they sound better when they're louder. Mm -hmm. So, the, the, but to the point, neighbor, the neighborhood is affected by outdoor music. And that's a problem. 
So I have concerns about it, having outdoor music at all, but especially with the band. I would, as I said, I wouldn't have a problem if you just played can music over speakers. You could control that. That's manageable. Uh, your point about um, the uh, container. The container is metal. Metal reflects sound. It doesn't absorb it. The tarps you have off the, you know, the, um, that will absorb sound. But the metal container, which was never approved, um, will only reflect the sound. It doesn't stop it. So you know, that, that's, that's what I see that problem. Um, I think that the whole allowing outdoor music, um, we have to give a lot of consideration for that because it will set a precedent. And you know, since we already have history of it, there being a problem, we need to give this a lot of thought and we have to be considerate of all the neighbors around there across the way and even in Sugarloaf. You know, you know, there's houses in Sugarloaf and, you know, could be affected. Uh, so, you know, we need to give a lot of thought and frankly, again, I'd prefer that you have the your music indoors so it's not an issue. I know there's implications with that, takes away seating and stuff possibly, but I mean, that would be the appropriate place to do is indoors, and then, so then the neighborhood is not affected. So the only comment I have to that is, for many, many years, uh, Mr. Hogan Bettis has, uh, the town board has approved seven concerts over at his house. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be monitored and, and the same thing? And OME made a statement uh, recently to the town board, I think, and they were getting their, uh, re I think their contract or something got a, Extended or something, and that, uh, that they are planning on after a concert. So, I mean, it's going to have to be something that's balanced here both ways. Mm -hmm. not going to. So, Mr. Logan Dennis has done this for so many years. He first he had it when he owned the back, right out the open air sugar, and now he does it in his house. And I think it's generous, and I think it's wonderful. I'm not just saying it's not. But, uh, you know, if we're going to supply a meter to one person's property, uh, then we have to apply it. something that the board's going to have to really take into consideration. Mm -hmm. Is this what you want to do? You want to curb it? If you're going to curb it for one, you have to curb it for more. Very simple. Uh, so, uh, can, we, can we address a few of the comments? Or, yeah, uh, sure. You're, you're, you're the applicant, so you can get that board the same as uh, right. So we have a lot to address here because you brought up a lot of good points. And in regards to the bands, you are right. A lot of them definitely want to play that do make sound loud. Um, as Dale mentioned earlier, part of it is a learning curve. So when the police were being called and we were learning about stopping the property at nine, we had to learn that too. And now we have new regulations. We are on site when the bands are there. So first of all, we do have a music coordinator that hosts these bands that does two festival readings with us. A lot of the times Dale and I do it ourselves because it is very important to us. We want to make sure it's done and it is enforced. And the bands know it. When I'm standing there in the middle of the festival reader in my red teacher going like this, I get the okay from them and they turn it down. We also now, when booking bands on a Friday night, require no encores if they are outside. So if they're inside, I don't care if you play an encore, that's great. When they're on that outside stage, they know that they must stop at 9 o'clock on the dot. There are no encores. Now, if they are non compliant in either of these things, they are also never rebooked. So we are trying to control that as much as we can. The live music is also fun, of course. Um, in regards to some of the other things, the permanent container is a whole other issue that I think we should address. It was on the other plan. Um, it does help and it does bounce noise back to an extent. I'm not a sound engineer. But the canvas does help and we're investigating two other things. We're investigating possibly a wood baffle system to see how that'll um, dampen the sound exiting our property more. We're also investigating the possibility of having a house sound system for outside so we can control where, what direction it emits, and how it does, but that's obviously, and the volume would be controlled by the house. Um, 
can you explain how that's different than the bands come now with their own so equipment? We would have, it would be a set direction. So instead of playing maybe directly only at the houses in Sugar Mountain straight out, because that's where our stage goes, we would be able to hook it up so some of the volume goes this way, some of the volume from the back goes into our seating. So it's more of a contained area. And the biggest importance is, like Dave said, it is music with the volume knob. So I would be that person with the volume knob if the band would not have their control. Um, but otherwise, I think if we are following all of the noise ordinances and we are below the decibels and we are within the time frame, I think we would be within our right to have outside music as long as it's compliant and does not negatively affect any of our neighbors. And what do you want to add? The only other thing is like, you're right, it's much easier inside. But the problem is I've worn some of the you know, things inside. They played it no one. Yeah, it's literally mm -hmm. like a band playing inside and everybody's outside. So we, you know, if we could retain the music, that would be a big benefit to the environment. Okay. Um, I believe those are the topics we would like to yeah, just review. a couple of other things that uh, the deck you're going to have to, your deck was permits. There's no, no message the deck is permits, so that's not an issue. But you're going to have to get architectural review the deck is going to send an on to the building. And I guess if you're going to put a container, it's no different than a shed that somebody would be putting, you know, uh, there. So the board would have to get some pictures. And, uh, I think we did I, we did provide some pictures of, of the canvas and of the container also. Mm -hmm. And the deck. <laughs> yes. Yeah. With our, is that in your memo? Or? Um, this is a narrative. And then that's what I meant for you. Yes. So you know the deck is not attached to the building. But it still needs architectural it's review. Still architectural. May I ask a question, actually? Do we need it. a permit to move like a shed, a container from one location on the property to another? Is the person in the back? <laughs> <laughs> There's the canvas. Right. And that's a view from the stage. And that's that shows the uh, the uh, AstroTurf, for lack of a better name. Hmm. Don was mentioning that that grass surface, the artificial grass surface, also uh, serves to absorb sound well there's the container right right there i'm sorry i didn't catch that today i was looking more at the front but you did a good job as well there's something. Uh, so would it be a good idea and then i'll have a question for today but would it be a good idea if the board went out there and had site visit which makes sense <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe we should be going out there on a Friday night or a Saturday night uh, and do a site visit. So, you know, then we can, you know, it just gives you a little bit of a flair of what we're doing for tonight. So, so, but my question comes down to the minute there is uh, more than three. Yeah, so we, we've gone down this road before. I have, I have a memo I can recirculate. You're allowed to do that. It doesn't have to be a notice meeting. What you can't do is deliberate. You can ask questions. You can observe. But you can't talk amongst yourselves like, hey, what do you guys think about this? Or what do you think about that? You can't deliberate on planning board business. You have to do that at an open forum. Mm -hmm. But you can certainly uh, site visits. You know, a lot of planning boards do them. Um, they're, they're great information gathering, but it's information gathering. It's not, it's not discussion. Um, so it doesn't need to be advertised, but you, you got to play by the rules. The only problem we have now is we're running at 46 degrees or 38 degrees at night. <laughs> we're not having dance this time right, right now. Right? We, we're keeping it inside until we you know, figure out the course of action. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and you could bear witness to the decimal reader and we can go location to location. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I mean, and if we can do some kind of simulated test or something yeah. like that, you know, I'm sure you don't want to wait until you come to the you know? Yeah, do you like Bonnie Raitt? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I looked, I looked on Google, and the loudest recorded song supposedly ever is Guns N' Roses, Welcome to the Jungle. So that's, that's what we use for the test. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, uh, so we're okay, though. Uh, in other words, we don't have to make this a notice of meeting and invite the public. That's in. correct. We're okay. As long as we go there. And, and, and don't discuss. Don't, don't discuss the. Yeah. You could ask, you know, the Van Dermel's question. <laughs> the stage is there. You can ask him questions, but you can't talk amongst yourselves about the project or how you vote on the project or what do you think about this? Or what do you think what that that needs to happen? Now, does this make a difference on the evenings? Or is it the difference in you know at night versus day on the sound? Or I don't know. I would say I just don't know. Should we be? Well, there's other issues besides sound. I mean, that's right. one, of the, one of the major issues, but there's other issues. Lighting. And like, I, I just think the more information you know, just walk you have, property it's going to be, it makes your decision in time. We're going to want you to. Tough assignment. Uh, yeah, that's not, that's so, everybody's okay. So, like, what are our availabilities now? You know, people work here and so on and so forth. It sounds like it'd be better individually. Well, you, you can do that as well. There's, you know, well, but if they're going to set up uh, speakers and all, they yeah, would like to we know. Have to, we have to pick a date. And just do it all in one. one what about the uh, the mean, second monthly meeting that we don't always have? What if we did it then? We're all probably available. And do it. Uh, the only thing, like Dave, which someone just said, if we did it on the, uh, you know, after dark, then you don't necessarily. Well, I mean, then you would see light. It's a trade off. You would see some of the lighting and all of that too at that point. That's the 21st, June 21st. Okay. Yeah, but like 7 o'clock at night, you know, on a Friday or Saturday, you get it, we get a flavor of what's going on there. I think that would be important. Right, so I mean, we wanted to do it, like Justin's saying, we could do it on the 17th, I guess, right? That's our mid-month here. We have nothing scheduled. Yeah, I mean, we all, we all might be here anyway. Right, I'm going to be around. I'm, I'm on vacation next week, so everybody knows okay. that. Uh, 17 would work for me. I'm back by then. What's the board available? I have 17. And if we did it, you know, a little later, like, you know, that, so that it, it's not affecting work schedules or something. We're available. The 17th would be good on a, so that's a Wednesday <coughs> night, the 17th. It's her birthday. So yeah. <laughs> I'm available. She's available. Quite happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> I do not want to hear that on the back. Actually, I'll take off into the jungle. <laughs> so, Justin, 17? John? I'm good. So, I can make everybody here. Uh, we're missing Seven. two tonight, but we'll see. Okay. Melissa, you can. 7 o'clock or 7.30? 7 o'clock, you can do. Is that good? Or 7. Or? Seven. Yeah. All right, so let's set a, let's set a site visit then. We can check out the language. Dave, is that good for you? Yes. On the seventeenth. Yep, that should be fine. Right, so we'll see, you'll send out a, a uh, email to everybody. Yes, and I'll also reach out to Mark and Dot. Mark and Dot too. Yeah. Let them know. They do the print in their speakers. I generally don't do something with this. I have to check my wife. We'll see. I'll check my wife. Well, bring bring her too. Meeting open at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, all right. Uh, again, you're going to also get, have to get architectural. We'll have to take, we'll, at that point in time, everyone can see the deck, see the, the you know, everything we can try. We'll set up some kind of music test, show us your decibel meter, everything like that. We go over the parking, the lighting, we can get a foyer for that. It sounds like you need to add lighting, not necessarily. Don't worry, we're telling you to calm the lighting down. Now we're asking for, for the safety of patrons and the employees there. Sounds like we're here. Okay, I, I'm, 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 sure, like, I'm sure there are a few that are, I think there might be two or three inch back that are five degrees. So we'll get it down to like zero. And, and the company that I have does that can build their own shields, you know, based on the, the light itself. Okay. 
Todd, you had, uh, before we break here, you had kind of like a lengthy, uh, do you want to go over that? Or? I just had the, the uh, facilities, so if you just site, you know, restroom facilities, is there going to be, is there going to be two or three people outside? Um, there's like a potty parity rules, there's how many, you know, fixtures and how many uh, devices and things and how many restrooms there are. And then the other common was that we had that little chamber pumping and, you know, we had that kind of discharge and had 50% you know, of discharge is, is it really calculated those numbers and discharge? Is the pipe size correctly? And it looks like you have, you know, existing, I don't know from the, again, existing versus proposed, the accuracy count, and now we're increasing 270 people. Um, is there going to be any capital report on these implications that I have? So yeah, every year, whenever we open up the uh, summer, we put in a plea yeah, for how that didn't seem to be necessary. So we uh, elected it to last year, and we do this year unless we require to have to work. But we, we will provide updated flows. Yeah. Uh, and location, just show location of those. Okay. All right, you okay? Thank you, Joseph. All right, so the 17th, I think. Uh, somebody probably from Fusco should be there for you to take over this. Yeah, we're, we're fine. Yeah. Right. yeah. Was Al said, no, you're, I'm going. I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Anything else in the board? Just a couple of general comments. Uh, I'd just like to say to you that I think the Tin Barn is a great asset to the town. You know, thank you for bringing it. And I think it's, uh, I think a lot, what I've heard, a lot of people will really enjoy it. So, you know, we think it's great what you've done. Um, as far as bringing the business in. And Dave, thanks for the checklist of so supplying your stuff. I wish all engineers had, would do that. Okay. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for doing that. Uh, as far as lighting, uh, there is a, a company, just for your information, Hubble, H-U-B-B-E-L-L. -L. Uh, they have lighting that uh, has, uh, you know, uh, full cutoffs. They have dimming, uh, all sorts of things that you may want to consider you know, for lighting. Um, I think we covered a lot of the, a lot of the other stuff, um, and I pretty much made my comments about it. You know the you know with the 2019 plan, you know it was 62 parking spaces, and I don't recall when discussing that there was any bank parking. I mean I don't have I don't have really an issue with you know from the 2000 plan showing that parking that. But that wasn't discussed, and that nor was that approved. Um, the container wasn't part of the plan; that was not approved yet on the property. I think that uh, actually, I, I, I'm not sure that's correct. I have a copy of the plan. I was on the board then, and that was not on the plan. We have a, we have a picture of yeah. it. Yeah, it, it may have been a picture, yeah. but on the on the site plan that was approved, it's not on there. On the February 15, 2019, it was approved in a different location. So what I just learned is I do need to file a permit, but uh, for the location move. But it was on the side of the building on the stamp 2000. I'm sorry, February 15 plan. Is that the plan? And we're 100 percent that that was permitted because it actually was part of the sale that the Gen X could not sell to us unless we permitted the one that we were going to keep and they had to permit it and pay their back fees on the other containers that weren't being removed. So it was in our heads a big deal at the time, so we remember it. That's the older plan. But I actually pulled, that's not the February 15 one. Oh, no, this is Jack's. This is, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. this is the proof. I'm part. looking at the January 15, 2019 drawing. I see there's a trailer on there. Just a concrete pad. I I don't see. There's no container. trailer. Is the but whatever. It was whatever. Mislabeled trailer. Oh, yeah. a container. Uh, I, if I can continue, you know, I'm glad you're coming to us now to get approval for this. I was frankly disappointed that you went forward putting up decks and this and that and outdoor music without getting permission. You know, but I'm glad you're coming to us now and and, and getting you know getting permission to do that. You know, because there's a lot of implications. You know, with you know, with the primarily noise outside. Um, you know, so things we have, we as a planning board have to, you know, review. I know you're trying to do the right thing, and we're going to try to accommodate that as much as we can. But we have to consider what's best for the neighborhood. 
you know, it's, uh, you know, noise outside, you know, as I said, is a concern. We have to really consider that, you know, it, you know, Don mentioned, you know, you know, Rich's, you know, music festival, you know, during the summer, um, I live on the opposite side of the mountain and I can hear the music, you know, it, it, it's not loud, but I can hear it, you know, so I can just imagine the people in Sugarloaf and on the opposite side of King's Highway, what, highway, what they hear, you know, music, but noise goes uphill. So one of the things you have to consider, um, while you monitor, monitor it, you know, right at your building, you know, it, it may require monitoring at, you know, on right up the top of the hill, right by King's Highway, to see what the noise level is up there as well, because noise does go uphill. So you know, other things to consider. You can add on the 17th if you want. You can add some spots. Oh, I think you did on one of your plans to show the rest. Right. 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 show a whole bunch of spots. Yeah. Yeah, 10 spots, 12 spots that are outside of the place. But we should look for all Thank you. 17th at 7 o'clock, right? We'll all get together. Just to reiterate, although they did all the permit, it's my fault I issued it without site plan. So they had an engineered plan for the deck and the proposed permit for the deck. Not looking for four. Well, I don't have a problem. <laughs> I don't have a problem taking that. But yeah. they did pull a permit for it. it. You could literally park a tractor trailer on that and it wouldn't shift. It's fine. Understood. It needs to be marked actually control. But that was my it will take care of it. Anything the states can use the only Which is fine. I have a friend living in. That's my problem. All right. Any other comments, questions, or anything like that? Okay. We'll see you on the uh, 17th. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Make a motion to close. Make a motion to close. Second. Have a good night.